Hi everyone and welcome to today's session uh, which is all about natural language processing. Uh, so I'm going to be guiding you through a series of uh, topics around uh, natural language processing today. Um, you'll be pleased to hear I'm sure that most of today is going to be quite light in terms of uh, actual code writing. Um, we're going to be talking mainly about the uh, processes and about some of the theory behind natural language processing more than uh, actually how you do this uh, yourself. Um, but I will be showing you links of uh, um, areas where you can look for further information on some of this stuff um, and also showing you a little bit of a, more of a worked example uh, using a piece of software called Spacey um, which we'll be taking you through uh, in a little while. So what do we mean by natural language processing? Well natural language processing which is commonly abbreviated to NLP, um, is focused on the way in which uh, computers interact with human language. Um, and there are two kind of key areas to natural language processing. There's the side in which we're trying to get computers to understand natural language in, in some way, that we're building an AI to try to get our computer to understand what we're, what we're saying to it. So that covers things like speech recognition, um, uh, kind of automated uh, bots, etc., that you see online, um, where they're trying to understand what somebody has uh, said when they're when they're trying to uh, uh, communicate to them. Um, and then there's the other side, uh, which is the area that we're more interested in, which is actually getting computers to learn how we form our language. Um, in order that they can help us to automatically extract information from unstructured free text. Um, and this can be really useful because it can allow us to uh, get capture information um, that's captured in, in free text without um, having to worry about all the normal issues uh, in terms of having to sort of manually sift through uh, this free text data and trying to uh, sort of get a human being to process it all. So that's the side that we're going to be focusing on uh, today. And in terms of that area of automating free text uh, information extraction, there are kind of three main areas um, in which uh, we can automate the process of extracting information from free text. Um, the first one is something called named entity recognition. Named entity recognition is where we try to extract what are known as named entities. These are things like people, uh, places, organisations, countries, um, those sort of things from free text and categorising them. And we'll come on to in a moment why that might be really useful. The second area is something called sentiment analysis. Uh, sentiment analysis is all about trying to uh, identify whether uh, some free text is uh, either positive, negative, or maybe neutral in tone. Um, and there's also something that goes hand in hand with that called sarcasm analysis, which we'll come on to later. Um, and again, this can be really useful uh, for trying to extract information uh, in a different way from free text. And the third area is something known as topic modelling. And in topic modelling, what we're trying to do is to automatically group texts uh, into clusters uh, based on how similar they are um, so that we're automatically kind of grouping things into similar topic areas. Um, and we're not going to go into topic modelling today, but I will at the end uh, show you where you can go and read a little bit more about that. So that all sounds sort of very theoretical at the moment. So let's ground this with an example. So let's imagine that we've got a hospital and uh, the hospital's asked patients to fill out a survey based on their experiences in the hospital. Um, now, if that survey contains free text comments, which very often they will, then what we may want to do is we might want to look to see whether the comments are positive, negative or neutral. So we want to apply some sort of sentiment analysis to this. We may want to look for specific uh, named entities that are being talked about positively, negatively or neutrally, uh, which is the named entity recognition side. So we may not just want to know whether this review was positive, but also to say well, what what were the things that were being talked about in 
that are positive reviews versus our negative reviews, for example. And we may also want to identify clusters of similar reviews to try and identify common themes. And that's where topic modeling might come into play. So let's start with named entity recognition. So what do we mean by a named entity? So a named entity is a real world object that can be denoted with a proper name. So uh, a named entity can either have a physical existence, for example, Dan Chalk, University of Exeter. Uh, these are both things that exist, at least I, I hope I exist. Um, or uh, they may have a more abstract existence. So concepts like discrete event simulation, that's not a physical thing, but it is a named entity. Woodwork, cookery, these are examples of abstract existences, but they are still named entities. And the sort of things that we would want to try and extract when we're undertaking named entity recognition. And as it turns out, there are lots of different potential categories for named entities. Um, and I'm putting this up here from, uh, so that there are lots of different sort of uh, category lists uh, depending on um, the package that you use. Spacey is a Python package that we're going to be using today um, and is probably one of the most widely used, if not the most widely used, um, uh, parsing, natural language uh, processing parsing package uh, uh, today. Um, and Spacey has its own set of categories. This isn't a finite list. Uh, these are the sort of default categories, but users can add... Um, their own categories to this as well. So in Spacey, you've got the, the idea that named entities can be of type person. Person basically just means that these are people. Um, and that can include fictional people, fictional characters as well. It can be NORP. A category NORP stands for nationalities or religious or political groups. Uh, we can have FAC, uh, which stands for facilities. So these, these are things like buildings, airports, bridges, etc. These are all named entities. Uh, there's a category called org, which uh, you probably guess stands for organizations. These are things like companies, institutions, etc. Uh, there's a category called GPE. Um, these are stands for geopolitical entities. So these are things like countries, cities, counties, uh, these geographical or and or political structures. Uh, LOC, which stands for uh, non-geopolitical entity locations. So things that wouldn't fit into GPE, but which are locations nonetheless. So think of things like mountain ranges or lakes, etc. They wouldn't come under GPE, but they would come under the LOC category. We've also got a category called product. Uh, this captures things like um, objects, vehicles, uh, foods, etc., but not services. Um, we've got a category for events, so think of things like um, name storms, uh, battles, wars, sporting events, etc. Uh, works of art, um, so that captures things like titles of books, uh, songs, films, those sort of things. Uh, law, that's for uh, name documents that have been made into laws. Uh, language, which represents any name language, English, French, etc. Uh, date. Now, this is an odd one that you may, uh, as, you, as we go down this list, you might uh, be surprised that some of these things are named entities, but they are very much named entities. So dates, which in in uh, named entity recognition terms, we mean absolute or relative dates or periods. So it might be something like the 1st of January 1962, uh, or it might be something like last month. Last month would also be a named entity of type date. Uh, we've also got the concept of time. So times are named entities and time, uh, the time category here captures any named entities that are uh, times which are smaller than a day. So uh, 12 minutes to two, um, three hours ago. Uh, percent, so this captures um, percentages uh, and um, they are represented as named entities and uh, for the avoidance of doubt, the named entity if it's a percentage will include the percentage character uh, money so that's monetary values including the unit so 
£2.50 would be an example of a money named entity. Uh, we've got quantity. So these are measurements such as weight or distance or some sort of quantity of something. Uh, ordinal category uh, named entities. These are things like first, second, etc. And cardinal named entities. And those are basically numbers that don't fall into one of those other types uh, listed above. Date, time, percent, money, quantity or ordinal. So any other numbers that don't fit into those categories would be classed as cardinal. So, that was a whistle-stop tour of uh, some of the basics of uh, named entity recognition classification and what a named entity is. So let's practice uh, with, a, with an exercise. So just to get things off, what I want you to do is uh, to study the following text, um, which I'm going to throw up in a moment. I want you to identify all of the named entities in that text, and I want you to categorise them according to the spacey categories that we've just talked through uh, on this slide here. If you feel for any of them that they don't fit into an existing category, then either put them into the category you think would they should best fit into, or if you think they really don't fit into any of them, then uh, feel free to create and name your own category. Okay, so um, you're going to find all the named entities, uh, and then say what category they belong to based on this list of spacey named entity categories. So here's your text. I'm just going to read it to you. Yesterday, Derek went to Waitrose and purchased a loaf of bread and a pint of milk. It cost him a total of £1.30, which he thought was quite reasonable. When he was in France a few weeks ago, he felt that bread was priced a little too high. He's often wondered if he should learn a bit about bread making but you'd have to learn the basics of cooking first. So there's your text. Uh, I want you to spend uh, about 10, 15 minutes or so uh, working through that. Identify what you think the named entities are and for each named entity, which category you think that named entity belongs to. When you're ready, we'll move on to the second video.